Smartphones that are built for Linux have been around for a few years now, and to be clear, I'm not talking about Android phones that are able to run Linux in some kind of virtualized environment. No, I'm talking about Linux running natively on your phone with full hardware support. The PinePhone and PinePhone Pro are probably the most popular models of Linux phones, followed by the Librem 5. I actually have the PinePhone Pro Explorer Edition right here running Manjaro with KDE Plasma. And this is a great little phone, but the design of it is a little bit dated. You know, the PinePhone Pro, when I first got it, it kind of reminded me of the Samsung Galaxy S8 Plus, which I happen to have here as well. And this Samsung, this is one of the first phones, and I'm pretty sure the first uh, Samsung phone to have the bezel-less design that pretty much every modern smartphone has now. And despite this Samsung phone being actually five years older than this PinePhone Pro, it has a better screen. I mean, not this particular S8 Plus because the screen is cracked, but you know what I mean. It's got better screen real estate or a better screen to body ratio, whatever you want to call it. You know, the bezels of the S8 Plus are a little bit smaller, and so you get more actual screen that you can see stuff on. Uh, the S8 Plus's OLED panel also has double the pixel density of the PinePhone Pro's LCD panel. And of course, this Samsung being an OLED, you get better colors, although with the PinePhone, it's technically a little bit brighter since it's an LCD. Um, so it's a little bit debatable, but you know, again, most of the high-end smartphones have been going in the direction of OLED panels instead of LCD because that's just what the market uh, tends to want more. And this hardware inferiority is pretty much consistent throughout the rest of these two phones. Okay, so the Samsung, it has a better camera with a wider aperture and image sensor. Um, I'm not sure what the megapixels are off the top of my head. I mean, they might actually be the same or the pine phone might be a little bit better but that's not really what affects your image quality it's how big the sensor is you know how much light can actually go into it um, along with the aperture and so the samsung actually ends up taking better pictures despite it being uh, a much older phone and the samsung's battery actually has slightly more capacity although the pine phone's battery is at least removable um, so I can show you guys what that looks like. If I can pry the back off here. So see, you can just take that right out there and then you can of course put a new one in um, or carry multiple ones with you. So that's a you know bit of an advantage in my book. Um, but again, most people are just not carrying around multiple batteries with them or, you know, changing batteries in their smartphone what, like we used to do in the good old days. And the Samsung also has a better CPU. Uh, it has more RAM, at least if you got the six gigabyte version, it has more RAM, six gigabytes in this compared to four gigabytes um, in the Pine phone. It's also got faster onboard storage. Uh, both of them have SD card expansion slots, so there's no uh, downside there. You know, it's not like the modern Samsungs where none of them have expandable storage now, or at least none of the flagships do. Um, and there's a couple other phones that have pretty good Linux support that have better specs than the Pine phone, like the Vola phone uh, and the Fair phone. They do have more modern technical specs uh, than the Pine phone, and of course, more modern than the S8 Plus as well, but those phones are technically designed to run Android. They just don't have any software or firmware locks or Israeli spyware in them, uh, in the case of Samsung phones, to prevent you from running Linux natively on them. But your performance may still vary because again, these phones were not necessarily designed from the beginning to run Linux. But there's a new contender in the mobile Linux space that is trying to push the envelope even further into the territory of modern flagship smartphones, even past the mark that the Fairphone and the Volaphone have set, and that is the latest Yala phone. And there's a possibility that I may be pronouncing this wrong because, well, it's me, and also this is a Finnish company. Um, but yeah, the Yala phone seems very promising. Now, full disclosure, this phone is a pre-order right now. So it does not actually exist at the time of me recording this video, but they're 84% of the way to their 2000 pre-order phone goal that 
they're looking for in order to help fund the creation of this device and actually bring it into a reality. Uh, also, this isn't Yala's first phone or their second phone. I think it's actually their third or fourth phone and they have developed a few other devices as well as Sailfish OS, which is the Linux-based mobile operating system that this phone and many of their other devices run. Uh, and it's also available to be installed on other phones that are not made by Yala, because again, there's a whole sphere of smartphones that are technically designed to run Linux, but are a little bit more, or excuse me, phones that are technically designed to run Android, but they're a little bit more open, and so people can install Linux natively to them. But this is a phone that is supposed to ship with Sailfish OS, which is a Linux-based OS, on it by default. Now, I know I started this video by dissing the Pine Phone's bezel size, and based on the images of this Yala phone here, um, the bezels of this new Yala phone are also looking kind of chunky for a brand new device, you know, a device that's going to be manufactured in uh, probably 2026, maybe a little bit later than that. Um, the notch here in the middle of the phone it kind of gives me iPhone XR vibes. And I think the bottom bezel of the phone here is also a little bit thicker than the iPhone XRs. Again, this is just a mock-up, so it could potentially be better. Um, but still, I think this phone is going to have a much better display than the other native Linux phones, um, specifically the PinePhone Pro and the Librem 5. And that's because this Yala phone is supposed to be an OLED with a pretty high pixel density. So if you can get over the notch that's going to be in the middle of the screen, I know this seems outdated and years ago, and you know it is compared to the rest of the flagship market, um, but still the viewing experience on this should be more similar to what you would expect to see on a modern flagship. And unlike the Pine phone, you've also got multiple cameras in the back of the Yala, which I know is a bit of a meme, but still, this is something that people just expect to see on a modern flagship device. And if you do a lot of photography with your phone and you haven't gotten a standalone video or you know photo camera, to do that photography with, having multiple lenses on the phone is a little bit of a benefit. Um, and it also looks like this phone is gonna have a much wider sensor, a much wider sensor and aperture than the Pine phone, which is, again, much more important to image quality than the megapixels or any of this AI bullshit that a lot of smartphones are throwing in now. Um, but again, we're not going to know for sure how good the cameras are until this phone is really made and we can have comparison videos and how good it shoots videos and how good it shoots photos. So let's get on to the really good stuff. Yala is promising a whopping 5,500 milliamp hour user replaceable battery for this phone, which is actually slightly better than the Pixel 10 Pro XL's battery. So this should be lasting a really long time, assuming that the uh, software is not super poorly optimized. That is one thing I have to say about uh, the Pine phone is that the battery life on it is not as good compared to uh, other Androids that would be comparable, I guess like maybe a Galaxy S5. Um, I don't have one to compare side by side, but I'm pretty sure just going from memory when I did have one, that the battery life on that was better than the Pine phone and the battery sizes. Uh, were about the same. Now, the battery in this uh, Yala phone, I don't think it's gonna be as easy to change as the Pine phones, because like I showed you, you could just pop off the back of the Pine phone without any tools and take out the battery that way. Uh, but again, it's supposed to be user replaceable, and since this is a phone manufactured in the EU, it probably has to comply with their laws, so I would assume that it's gonna be you know, a little bit easier than what we've seen from a lot of smartphones in the past that uh, really were not easy for the end user to repair or replace any components on their own. And again, not being able to do in-field battery changes on smartphones is just the direction that the industry has been going in for a while now and consumers have pretty much gotten used to the lack of that feature. Uh, but unlike the Pixel phone and most other flagships, you actually get the micro SD card slot in the Yala phone. That's another 
fairly consistent thing that I've seen amongst Linux phones, and I'm really glad to see it. In fact, I think it's actually part of the process, or at least with the Pine phone, it was uh, part of the process for getting an operating system installed onto the phone is loading it off of an SD card. Now, with the 256 gigabytes of onboard storage, uh, that's gonna be in the base model because they say 256 gigabyte plus. And I don't know if that's gonna be true for the RAM as well. I mean, 12 gigabytes of RAM in a phone is pretty damn good. I mean, that's, it, for me, you know, it's pretty hard to use more RAM than that on a smartphone, although there are flagships that are shipping with 16 gigs. And I guess it is plausible for you to use more RAM than that if you just have a ridiculous amount of tabs and apps open uh, or if you're doing gaming on the phone. Uh, but anyway, getting back to this 256 gigs of storage, I don't know how fast this storage is actually going to be. My gut tells me it's probably not gonna be top of the line like UFS 4 or even 3.2 or 3.1 because the Yala phone, um, like if we come down to like connectivity here. It also doesn't support Wi-Fi 7 or Wi-Fi 6E, you know, the latest and greatest uh, Wi-Fi connections, and it also doesn't support the latest and greatest Bluetooth, although that there might just be due to limited hardware and driver support in Linux. Um, but again, just because they're not including the latest and greatest for connectivity makes me think that the same may be true for the storage. Um, and you know, it's kind of a bummer to not have at least something more comparable to the bleeding edge now in a phone that's not even gonna be released until 2026 or later. And the CPU is also a mystery right now. So they say it's gonna be a high performance uh, MediaTek 5G platform, but we don't know exactly which chip it's gonna be right now. And so again, we're gonna have to wait until the full specs of this phone come out, or ideally when the phone is actually manufactured and then compare it side by side to the other Androids or other phones that are running Snapdragons, Tensors, and um, I think the Pine phone is a rock chip and you know all the other different chips that are in smartphones that are able to run Linux on them. Uh, but overall, I do think this is a very, very promising device. And I also really love the color scheme of it. That's really the first thing uh, that caught my eye. I think that the orange is a perfect color for a trap phone, if you're a friend of Monero-chan. And I think if Yala can actually deliver on the specifications here, or potentially create a smartphone that has even better specifications than what they're listing here, then this would actually be the best price to performance Linux smartphone that you can buy on the market right now. So they have the pre-order for 99 euros and that's gonna go towards the full price. It looks like if you pre-order, the full price is gonna be 500 or 499 euros. And then the normal price is gonna be between 599 and 699 euros. So it's definitely up around that you know, premium flagship smartphone price, uh, not quite a thousand dollars, but damn near close to it. But again, you're getting premium phone specifications, you know, more or less depending on what, you know, how good it actually is. And it seems like it's a pretty good deal for anybody who really wants to have a privacy friendly Linux smartphone, especially if you're in the European market. So I'm gonna link the pre-order for the Yala phone in the description of this video. And if you enjoyed this video, please like and share it to hack the algorithm and check out my online store, base.win, where you can buy my awesome merch or accessories for your phone or laptop. 10% store-wide discount when you pay with Monero XMR at checkout. Have a great rest of your day.